In the next minutes, I will show you how to register a device to Cumulosity. On the desk, I have some devices which are used in the past to get registered and connected to Cumulosity. So here you see this is my Raspberry Pi. I have connected the master bricklet to my Raspberry Pi and to the master bricklet I have connected the temperature sensor, accelerometer and rotary encoder. So these sensors you would see then as child devices. In addition, I have my U-Block, so this is a box of my U-Block system. I will show you later on how to register and connect the U-Block system to Cumulosity. And I have my smartphone. It's very easy to connect and register the smartphone to Cumulosity using the Cloud Sensor app. The Cumulosity Cloud Sensor app is a smartphone application which sends sensor measurements to Cumulosity IoT and commands can also be sent from your Cumulosity IoT platform to the smartphone. So let's have a look on how this is shown in Cumulosity IoT. So once you have registered your smartphone, so you see a group has been created and in the group you see the smartphone and if you would open this you see the number of dashboards which are available, have, which have been created for the smartphone. I don't go into details here because we have a separate e-learning on how to register, connect and work with the smartphone with the Cloud Sensor app. I would like to show you how you get information concerning the registration and the connection of the Raspberry Pi. So we use the application switcher to navigate to the Software AG Cloud. And then in the products menu, we select Cumulosity IoT. And from here, Next to the Try for Free button, you see the Device Catalog button. So this is a link to the Partner Portal where you have the Device Catalog with a list of all certified devices. So we can search for the Raspberry Pi here. Then we can open the page and here we find some generic information and we see a link to the quick start guide. This guide describes how to configure the device for use with Cumulosity and how to connect it to Cumulosity. The device has been tested to be supported by the Cumulosity's Linux agent. Now we want to connect the U-Block system to Cumulosity. So in here, so this is my Ublox device. The Ublox device is a starter kit that allows quick prototyping of a variety of applications for the Internet of Things. The device comes with a cellular module as well as a GPS receiver. For demonstration purposes, I have attached the MVAT application shield to the Ublox device. So it provides various sensors and an LCD display. I'm running the Cumulosity MVAT agent on my device, which provides a full auto registration, the collection and storage of temperature, GPS, accelerometer, and analog sensor reading. The application sheet comes with two knobs, you see here and there, A1, A2, to send analog measurements. Remote control of the device LEDs and LCD display from Cumulosity is supported. In addition to assemble the device with the Cumulosity agent, a SIM card is a prerequisite and you need a good mobile network connectivity. So let me plug in the power supply. 
Once I plug in the power supply and connect this to the application board, the device will dial up to the internet. You see the updated status in the LCD display. In case the driver cannot connect to the internet, you will see a corresponding error message. On a successful connection for the first time, the display shows bootstrapping and below the EMEI of the cellular modem. The EMEI of the cellular modem can also be found on the white sticker on the modem chip of the Ublox device. So I would like to register this to my Cumulosity tenant. So in this case, I'm using my training tenant, which is part of my training environment and not hosted through the Software AG Cloud. In order to register a device, we navigate from the cockpit application to the device management application. The device management application provides functionalities for managing and monitoring devices and it enables you to control and troubleshoot the device. We open the devices menu entry and here we have the button to, or we have the menu item to register a device. We would like to do a registration of a single device. We don't do bulk device registration. And from here, we need to have the EMEI. So I will copy and paste this on onto this dialog box. So this is the EMEI, which is my device ID. So I click next and then I complete the registration step because my device is already connected. We have plugged in the power supply. So now we see our device in pending uh, acceptance status. And we accept the device. Now we should get a confirmation the device registration has been accepted. So now the device is registered and should be visible in the list of all devices. So because this is my training environment, we have these different uh, devices in addition to my just connected embed test device. I have another device which I have connected already last year and I have a number of temperature devices, so these are instances of the temperature simulator. The list, so the, the columns of the list uh, can be modified, so you can hide some columns and you could also add some custom columns. In order to delete a device from the list, you hover your mouse over the device and then you see the delete icon. Deleting a device will remove the device from the database, including all of its generated data. So from the list of devices, we can select our device. And here we see this generated page. So we call this a smart UI. The tabs are only displayed if the kind of information is available for you. So the idea is don't show empty tabs. Right now we are looking on the info tab. This is general information on a device. We can look to measurements. Within the measurements, we have a default visualization of numeric data by the device in form of charts. So Right now we see the visualization of analog measurements. So remember we have these knobs A1 and A2. Let me move these. Below analog measurements we see signal strengths and below this we have the temperature measurement. So all these data points come from our Ublox device. This visualization, I can change the time interval, so I can 
might put it to a last minute. So the Ublox device, so the agent only sends data if there are some major changes in the current measurement. So therefore, let me bring the small device, as a, the device as a small window onto the screen. And now, so I will change the knob A1. You see there is a change, so the blue line goes down because I have changed this. I can uh, enlarge the, the measurement and I could do the same, of course, for, for A2, which is the orange line. So in the display, we see the tenant name, we see the signal strength, and then we see which data is currently sent to Cumulosity. We can assign our device to a group. Remember to make our devices be part of a business use case. We have to assign to a business structure. The business structure is created in form of groups. So to add a group, we can go from here. So we can call my group, my group. And then we can assign a device directly to the group. <coughs> so there are other groups. So if we go back to all devices, maybe you don't want to see all devices. So we can then add some filter criteria based on name, model, serial number, and so on. So on these columns, you see this. Uh, filter icon and now I want to only look for my embed devices. So now I only see these two uh, devices being part of the list. Cumulosity provides you with the feature of a smart group. So a smart group is dynamically structured based on filter criteria. So in order to create a smart group, you first of all set the filter conditions and then if you are satisfied with the group, then you create a smart group. And then we call it embed devices, for example. So this group can be used for, or groups can be used for bulk upgrades. So in this case, our smart group can be used to do a bulk upgrade on devices, on all devices of type Ublox. And this, for example, could be an update on the software or on the firmware version on these devices. To clear the filters, then you can use clear filters. And then you go back to the complete list. Within the group section, now we see we have the static group where we assign the devices directly and we have the smart group where it's a dynamically created membership of the devices. <coughs>